today we are going to look at um, how to install data power uh, docker appliance uh, in your laptop um, in data power community especially people who are uh, learning data power uh, for them uh, one of the basic question is that um, where is the uh, instance or where is the data power appliance on which I can do the hands-on and uh, the corporate setup is typically so restrictive that they are not able to do whatever they want or especially practice um, <clears throat> their skills. So data power docker uh, is uh, uh, an ideal place for them uh, to get uh, their hands dirty uh, as far as the development and administrator administration concepts are concerned. So today, um, we are going to talk about how to set up the data power appliance in your laptop or desktop. <clears throat> um, this video especially features the setup part in a Mac. Um, I'm going to create a separate uh, uh, video for uh, Linux and Windows. Setup pretty much remains the same. And uh, if you follow the steps over here, you will have the data power appliance up and running uh, in your laptop uh, pretty much uh, quickly. So without having a delay, let's get started with it. <clears throat> the first prerequisite that you, you, you must remember is that um, your Mac must have uh, the uh, data power, uh, the Docker desktop running. So you can see that I have a Docker uh, desktop running over here and uh, I have pretty much uh, uh, it running in, in a stable form, right? And if you go to images section, you will see that I have a couple of images over here, but uh, you don't see data power related uh, images here. These are some of the extensions that I typically use for uh, um, uh, different projects. Uh, so uh, uh, that that's pretty much it. Now I'm closing it and I'm going back to the command line um, I can type in docker image ls and similar um, images are displayed here. Okay, so docker is working fine. Step one and prerequisite is complete. What is the next one? The next one is to pull data power docker image from the repository. But where is that repository? Earlier it used to be on Docker Hub. IBM no longer supports that. So the repository, the data power repository is on um, uh, IBM uh, ICR repository, the called ICR.io. Now uh, this is the image name uh, that you must remember. I will put it into the description so that you can copy it easily and I will say docker pull and then the image name. Now it's going to take a while uh, for this uh, docker image to pull but a uh, few things to remember. One, uh, I haven't supplied any kind of credentials to pull this image so you can consider it like publicly hosted Second, you see uh, this appliance, the container uh, image that you're downloading, um, it should be used for uh, learning and development. You cannot use it for anything other than that. Um, and uh, last one is that it's going to take a little while uh, for to download. Um, I do not have a blazing fast internet connection, so of course it's going to take a little while. Um, I'm going to use that time to set up a few directories and uh, their accesses so that once the image um, is downloaded, um, I can do the remaining setup pretty much fast. So I'm going to another command line window here. And uh, here I'm going to create first a, uh, a top level folder called uh, data power. Okay then um, I'm going to get inside it and then I'll create three more folders here cert, config and local and uh, I'm going to say that uh, 777 for uh, 
everything inside it. Okay, so let's check. I think that cert config and local are created and everything everybody has full access on these folders. Remember guys this is the setup that you would do for development and uh, practice purpose. Um, making directories so much permissible uh, is not a good practice in uh, a production environment. Uh, but we are not talking about a production uh, setup over here in any ways, right? So uh, we want to keep things easy. Now, you may ask me that if I do not uh, create these directory structure, will I not be able to run the data power uh, Docker instance? Uh, the answer is uh, yes, you can run but you will end up having surprises, meaning that the objects that you will create or uh, certificates that you will update, uh, you may not find them at a usual place. Um, you will have problems um, in DevOps part of it. So directory structure that we have created here, um, lets us, uh, uh, it basically provides us a predictable place where we can put our files and we can safely assume that it will be mounted inside uh, the Docker container that uh, we will create in a moment. So these, this directory structure is for that purpose. You will see that we'll mount it uh, as a volume inside the Docker container shortly. Now, uh, the Docker is, oh, so it, um, it, it has uh, still some time when it, it will get downloaded fully. So I'll pause the video for a moment and we'll resume it once the uh, Docker download is complete. So as you can see that it is uh, <clears throat> about to complete and we will have the data power Docker image shortly. So let us wait uh, for it to finish. Good, so it is uh, finished now and uh, it says the status downloaded newer image for icr.io 10.0.3 okay good um, you have to remember one thing um, normally people uh, do it like data power limited colon latest do not use the tag latest because it will not fetch you the latest uh, data power appliance use the tag as i uh, did it over here and as you can see um, I have the data power image locally available so let's verify it uh, for a moment and you can see that I have the data power image over here now uh, the next step is to uh, run this data power image I cannot just run it like docker run and then uh, the image ID data power uh, requires certain um, arguments to be passed and if you run it as is uh, it will not work simply it will not work so um, let's go ahead and uh, try to uh, run this uh, data power uh, container image in an appropriate manner in order to do this we'll use the uh, second window will get into the data power folder which we created brand new and inside it I have three folders it is important that you get into this folder and then uh, you fire the command which will uh, run the um, which will spawn a data power container and run it now to do that let us make uh, make a note of this container image ID let us go back to our notepad here I have marked a, a created a command with all the arguments over here I'll simply go through it it says docker run it in an interactive manner I'm mounting the volume config folder into the data power config folder local folder into data power local 
and sort folder into the data power sort. These uh, are the options that you must provide. Otherwise, the data power uh, container will not run. Here, I'm trying to expose some ports. So 9090 is for the data power web GUI. And then port number 22 is for uh, the SSH. 5554 is for um, the um, JSON API, that REST API that it, the, the uh, data power has. And uh, I can perhaps also add uh, 5550 as a SOMA port, 5550. And then this port number, this port range is very much important because <clears throat> this port range gives you a usable port range um, on which you can, you can install services like multi-protocol, gateway, XML, firewall, etc. And uh, then those services will be accessible from outside the container, which means that you can connect uh, to it using tools like curl or postman and you can test your services. Now, <clears throat> um, I have only secured 10, 11 ports, 10 ports over here, roughly speaking. Um, you can say that, okay, I will make it like 80, 20, but uh, don't, don't fall into that temptation because if you go ahead and try to uh, basically do um, uh, reserve 20 ports over here. Um, I have seen instances where sometimes operating system blocks it. Um, maybe they, they look at it some kind of malicious activity. So <clears throat> uh, in, in many cases, it hasn't worked, okay? And 10 ports are uh, relatively enough for anybody to uh, start learning things on the uh, data power. So without further uh, delay, let's copy this command and come back into the data power folder and let's paste it and let's run it. Let's see what happens. Good. So it has, uh, it is doing some basic configurations over here and in a moment it will give us a command prompt. Good. So login prompt is here. Uh, you need to use the user ID called admin and the password is same, admin. So I just logged in. Now I need to enable the data power web GUI here. So I will get into the configuration prompt and then say web management and then I'll go and say admin state enabled and then I'll exit from here. I'll save this configuration and again I'll exit from here and I will exit. <clears throat> now I'm back to the login prompt, okay? Uh, there is nothing more that you have to do over here. All that you have to do is to point your browser uh, to, so I'll go ahead and do HTTPS uh, local host and then 9090. Let's see what it gives us. Oh, so giving a, a certificate warning. So continue. Ah, I'm, uh, I can see the data power web GUI. To log in, I will say admin, admin. Uh, right now there is only one domain over here and the default user interface is web GUI. So you are able to log on to the data power appliance now. Um, in the first go, it will be relatively slow, but uh, next time onwards, um, it is going to be uh, pretty much fast. So you have data power uh, web GUI up and running, and here you can do pretty much anything that you want to do with the data power, okay? So uh, effectively, we have, uh, in, we have created a data power Docker appliance uh, instance, and we are able to set up uh, the appliance for our users, you see how I connect with it. It says localhost 9090. So localhost is the IP on which every service will be accessible and you have pretty much um, it uh, running. Now the question is that um, it's okay, it is running here. Um, in fact, we can see it here, docker container ls. 
So we can see this container is up and running. Um, how do I stop it? So I will say docker container stop and then uh, provide the container ID. Uh, the container is stopped. If you try to run it, you can see that it says um, unable to connect. Fine. So how do I uh, start it again? Well, do I need to do all these things that I did here, like uh, uh, going into configuration, etc.? No, pretty much no. You just say docker container start and then your container ID. Done. Your uh, Docker, uh, the, your data power appliance is up and running. In a moment, it will give you uh, the web GUI. So you see that it says localhost, um, and uh, it is it will provide us the GUI any moment. Good. So we can see the web GUI over here. We can log in the way we did last time. And this time the process is a little bit faster because it uh, does not have to do uh, things from scratch. So um, you can see the interface up and running in a moment. Fine. So this is all about uh, um, installing the data power appliance locally. Uh, I'll summarize. Number one, you need to have Docker desktop in your Mac. Second, uh, do not forget to create the directories like I created. Third one, pull the Docker image uh, the way I did and from the same repository. Uh, if you, uh, the repository name is given in the description uh, as well for your convenience. And the fourth one is uh, when you try to run or when you try to create uh, a container out of that image, uh, then make sure that you uh, mount the directories as, as well as um, provide the port ranges uh, which are exposed outside the container. Otherwise, you will be able to use the data power uh, appliance, but your services, you will not be able to test it through tools like curl or postman, etc. So these are the things that you have to keep in mind. Um, in next video, I'm going to talk about how to install it in um, Windows. And uh, in, in another one, I'll talk about it, how to install it in the um, Linux uh, based machines. So uh, that's all for today.